for Krima Media's Polity, I'm Tabi Madiba. Joining me today is researcher and analyst Professor Raymond Satna, here to tell us more on his column titled How Meanings of Revolutionary or Emancipatory Consciousness and Actions Need to Change Over Time, Part 2. If you have what you call a revolutionary or emancipatory consciousness and you define it, how can it continually change? Well, if you prepare, have a revolutionary consciousness in 1960, uh, you are facing an apparently all-powerful apartheid regime. In, 19, in 2023, you are dealing with the post-apartheid society, which um, has features which are itself different from the early days of freedom. For example, when Mandela was president, when Becky was president, was very different from the period when Zuma was president and the period of Ramaphosa, which has not remedied the things of the Zuma period. So when you fought against the apartheid regime, you had to prepare yourself for a regime that was brutal, and you yourself had been prepared to do whatever you had undertaken in various spheres. Like some people took up arms, someone like myself wrote illegal pamphlets. Uh, some people tried to do things through the universities and schools and so forth. But it changed during the apartheid regime. There was the people's power period and ungovernability when the power of the apartheid regime didn't seem as stable as before. And then there were later periods, but I'm going to come to these in later parts of the series. But that's to give you an example. You can't act the same way in 2023 as you did in 1969 or 1975 when I was first arrested. And if you understand and agree with taking part in a revolution, how can some set limits on what they do while others give their lives? You know, we need to understand that some people uh, may be afraid to get involved in taking up arms, but they can do a lot of things that can help to bring about democracy in South Africa in the period, I'm talking now about in the period of apartheid. And it's very important not to force, try to force people to do things that they're afraid of. If they are able to do things with books and with computers, uh, and that was dangerous in the country, because I was doing that in the country and I got arrested, because I was right. it depends what you write, because if you use your computer to write about the great trick, it's very different from writing about uh, that the people must govern. So even in the case of people who joined MK, the information that I have, which I've quoted, is that when they were about to cross the border, Chris Harney would brief the people who were going in, and he would say to them, are you sure you're ready? Have you got no unfinished business? Because he was aware of the fact that if people went into the country and they had some problem that was worrying them in the end and had had a big argument, and it may have upset how they worked inside the country, and they could possibly die because they were so upset. So it was very concerned that we didn't have more statistics of dead people. Every human being counted to him, for him, and I agree with that. For example, if you're in a marriage and you have an agreement with your partner that uh, you will do this, that, and the other, and you can do other things at other times, and it's very important in terms of the way the marriage compact, the way you uh, agreed when you got married, and you can still do a lot of work for the struggle, but you've got that agreement. If I were asked, I would say, fine, you do this work for us, please, and the rest of the time you go home. Um, so that we must be flexible. I never had that case, but I think we need to make allowances for it now 
and then in more dangerous periods. And what does it mean to say that the meaning of revolutionary consciousness and revolutionary action change with context? Even connecting, even joining. When I first made contact with the ANC and SSDP, that itself was enough to get me into jail. But now those organizations are legal. But you see, there had been a period of popular power and ungovernability. In that period, the apartheid regime, was it was impossible for them to make the country governable. All these structures that they set up, people were boycotting elections and all of that. At the same time, the liberation movement was not strong enough to overthrow the apartheid state militarily. And that is the situation when Madiba secretly had talks with the enemy, as we used to call them, or let's say the other side, and people from outside also did it. Because there was a recognition that there was a stalemate. Now, in a situation like that, um, secret talks is something which is frowned upon. You know, we don't, we didn't know anything about inside the country. We were busy trying to overthrow the regime. But when we get into a period of talks, certain other ways of relating, like secrecy, become necessary to set up the negotiations. And when the negotiations started, the question was, is it just talks or do we continue to show our power in the streets? Now, it became very important, for example, after the killing of Chris Hani and other situations, the Boy Patong and Bishaw massacres, to show the power of the people. It wasn't just reasoning. And that way, we secured an election question. How do you relate? Do you just go to the ballot box or do you do other things? And this is something which I haven't yet written about, but in the series. But I don't believe that my role or anyone else's role is simply to be observers, admire our leaders or criticize our leaders. We must have our own power, self-agency, even uh, apart from the vote. And lastly, Raymond, why do you place so much weight on preparation? You see, I was raising it in the first place in relation to illegal struggle. It's obviously important in terms of people who go to parliament, people who go into the civil service. They all need to be adequately trained to do the job, and the training is different for all of them. But in the case of my own situation, when I was recruited, uh, I had to look forward to the likelihood of being arrested at some point, tortured, going to prison, possibly being imprisoned again, possibly dying. And you've got to say to yourself, not simply, I support this, but uh, am I ready to do this? And what I did is I spoke to a lot of people. I, it was secret, but I had to be uh, find ways of finding out what was it like in detention? What was it like to be tortured? So when I was tortured, when I went into the police detention, it was not some foreign country. It was something I had heard about. So that when you know about what you're facing, it actually gives you some preparation, no matter how terrible it was. And people like Breitenbach, who I mentioned, he didn't seem to have prepared properly, and it was like some romantic thing. And a whole, in consequence of him not preparing properly, a whole lot of people he went to see. Now, you know, when I came in underground, I didn't contact anyone. I knew there were a lot of ex-political prisoners, and I just stayed away from them, stayed away from anyone. I met Steve Biko once, but I stayed away from Steve Biko. I met, you know, there was someone who was banned, came into the same social gathering as me, breaking his banning order. I just disappeared because I didn't want to be called as a state witness against him. So I, I had to be very careful. And so this preparation prepares you, A, for a life of loneliness, 
because you can't meet with some people, but also you have to prepare yourself. If you have no violence against you, you're going to have it now if these people catch you. So that's what I mean. It's very, very important, not just to go there with Freedom Charter is my gospel or something like that. A lot of these guys, if they're atheists, they say, I preached the Freedom Charter as my gospel. Now, the Freedom Charter is not going to save you from being clubbed, and, and you've got to be ready for being clubbed. That was Professor Raymond Sadna speaking to Krima Media's polity about how meanings of revolutionary or emancipatory consciousness and actions need to change over time. Part two.